If you are a licensed private investigator or looking to hire an investigator, one of the key words to be aware of is the phrase called pretexting. Pretexting is basically pretending to be somebody else or making up a fake story in order to gather information. And pretexting by itself is not illegal, but if you're using it to get information under certain categories, it may not be legal. As an example, if you use pretexting to pretend you are a person to get somebody's bank account records, that's illegal. If you use pretextings just to observe something, it's probably not illegal. For example, if you you know walk around with a yellow vest on to make it look like you're official, just to be able to uh, walk down the street to maybe you know look what's going on in a neighborhood, that's probably not illegal. But if you pretend that you are UPS driver, put a UPS patch on, carry a box, go up to somebody's house to be able to look inside their house, that may be pretexting to invade somebody's privacy. There's many laws at the federal and state level that will determine whether or not your pretexting is allowed or not. So you might think, well, who cares if it's legal? Why shouldn't I just do pretexting and get away with it? Well, part of the reason is if the information you're obtaining is ever going to be used in court, which more than likely, that's what you're doing it for, to use assets for asset recovery or to use evidence in court. At some point, you're going to be asked, how did you get that information? And if it's discovered that you obtain the information through illegal pretexting, not only can the evidence not be usable, the person who performed this activity can be sanctioned and really get in legal trouble. Sometimes it's actually a criminal offense to do this. You as a client may be held liable under vicarious liability where you might have damages against you civilly and worst case scenario your entire legal case could be found against you now remember we're not attorneys we're not giving you legal advice so you want to get good qualified legal advice but the important thing is to make sure that if you're gathering information that whoever is gathering the information for you is doing it using proper procedures and not using illegal pretexting. There's a federal law called the Graham-Leach-Biley Act, which covers a lot of this illegal pretexting. And this came because there was a very large case where some um, a board of directors for a company hired an investigator to pretend they were another person to get some cell phone records. And these cell phone records were used in a court case and this started the whole Graham Leach Biley Act. If you obtain records improperly, it can have a domino effect on you, your case, and all the all the gains you're trying to make with your endeavors. One of the other factors in pretexting, it doesn't have to be a big thing. We had a case a few years ago where a client was in a lawsuit with an opposing party. And we knew that both parties we're wanting to get information on assets of the other side to see if they won, how much could they get, did the other side have any money to fight the case. There was a lot of reasons to find out about assets. And part of our efforts in this case was to find assets on the other party. So we were doing, you know, asset search, bank account search, all the type of searches you normally would do for a case, but we were doing it legally using GLB compliant methods, no illegal pretexting, whole nine yards. But as we always do, we counsel our clients to be aware of things that might be used against them. We tell them, look, be on the lookout for things that are happening that might be another investigator investigating you, right? And we tell the attorney, be on the lookout for these actions by your opposing party, by their attorney, by their investigator. It's called counterintelligence. And we ask them, if anything happens unusual, any weird people come to your door, you get weird mail, you have phone calls that are unusual, maybe someone's following you, let us know so we can look into it. Well, sure enough, a couple weeks later, the attorney for our client said, look, they got this piece of mail that didn't make any sense. And what they received was a check in the mail. It was a rebate check. It was from a generic company called USA Rebate. It was for $10. And it said... Thank you for purchasing our product. We appreciate you buying American. Here's our appreciation for you buying our product. Here's your $10 rebate check. Use it in good health, whatever it was. And it was a letter attached to it and a check for $10. And they said it didn't make any sense. We don't remember what we bought. And the letter itself even looked kind of, you know, um, wasn't as formal as you would expect. And the company really didn't make any sense. It was from a P.O. box. So we took the letter. We took the check. 
we did some investigation on it. We tracked the P.O. box, traced it back to who it was. And what we told our client was, take that check, open up a new bank account at another bank than where you bank from. Put a small deposit, $100, right, to open this account. Now take this check and deposit it, right, into uh, the account. And what we wanted to do is see what happened with this check, right? So the reason that this check was given to our client was because the opposing party of this lawsuit was trying to see if this check was deposited, what account it went to so they can do an asset search on that account, right? Well, technically that's illegal pretexting because you made up a fake story about this rebate and this product you bought, which was a totally you know, made up story, you know, not a true story, by itself is not illegal, but you're using it to get sensitive information, to get bank account information. So we found out who it was, we tracked it back, we found out that this P.O. box that happened to be halfway across the country traced back to a private investigator that was in the town where the opposing party was located. In fact, we took it a step further. We, we searched that private investigator and we found that in the past, they had done work for this attorney that represented the other side. So it was a complete circle and traced it back to him. We presented this evidence to our, part, our, our client, to their attorney, and their attorney br brought it to court and they got sanctions against that attorney saying, look, you hired an investigator that did something illegal and it had consequences for the other side. So it could be something very small. So being aware of those things, and look, when we... Um, we de dealt with that other investigator. That other investigator had to sit for a deposition and was deposed by our client's attorney. And I, when I looked at the transcript of that depo deposition, I believe that they didn't even know what they were doing was illegal, right? Many times investigators think they're doing something that's legit, but it's totally illegal. And, the, and this person didn't even know, right? That's why it's important to deal with making sure that your resources are doing something proper so you don't get into trouble and you don't lose traction on your case and lose benefits that you may have that get thrown out the window because accidentally somebody did something wrong.